Chemistry lecture number 13, mixtures of matter. A mixture is a blend of two or more substances. The substances are in physical contact but are not chemically bonded. Here are some examples of mixtures. Oil and water, ice floating in water, and a hard boiled egg. All right, so I don't know how I can see this. Uh, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. So this is uh, oil and water. You can see that uh, if I hold it at the right angle. Yeah, you see how there's sort of a layer so this bottom part is the water layer, and this part up here is the oil layer. Um, the oil is in contact with the water, but uh, it's not chemically bonded to uh, the water. Ice floating in uh, water. Oh, here's a picture of a better picture. So here's a picture of uh, oil sitting on top of water. Ice floating in water. So you can see that uh, there are different, you can see different sections of this, uh, of this uh, mixture. There's the ice section, there's the bubble section, here's water. Now if you can look at a mixture and see different sections or regions, the sections are called phases. Oil and water, ice floating in water, and a hard boiled egg are all mixtures with different phases or uh, sections. I forgot to show the egg. So an egg is an example of a uh, mixture. So if I take an egg and let's see if I can cut this in half. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> an egg is a mixture of uh, different things. They're in physical contact. There's the shell, which is in contact with the egg white, which is in contact with the uh, egg yolk. And each of these different sections are phases. So there's the uh, yolk phase, there's the uh, egg white phase, and there's the uh, shell phase. If we look at our other examples of mixtures, <clears throat> For ice water, there's the ice phase, and there's the liquid phase, and then there's the uh, bubble phase. And then for uh, oil and water, there's the oil phase, and there's the water phase. So if you can see distinct sections in a mixture, um, those are phases. Now if I dissolve sugar in water, you have a mixture with only one phase. Uh, the mixture is not divided into different sections. It's a mixture because the sugar and water are in contact with each other but are not bonded so here's some uh, sugar water and I don't really see any sections in here uh, the sugar is not physically uh, in a different region from the water it's mixed in with the water so if you can only see uh, one phase um, then it has a special name well, a heterogeneous mixture, the composition is not uniform, it has two or more phases. A homogeneous mixture, the composition is uniform, it has only one phase. So for something like sugar water, so here's a glass of uh, water, and we're, so this is sugar water. Sugar water just looks like regular water, and if you look at a glass of sugar water, all you do is see the liquid phase, you don't see any uh, divisions in it. Now oil and water has, you know, two different sections. But uh, sugar water, it's just that one region. If it only has one region or one phase, it's homogeneous. So sugar dissolved in water is a homogeneous mixture. Oil and water, ice and water, and a hard boiled egg, those are all examples of heterogeneous mixtures because in each of these you can see uh, more than one section, two or more sections. Components of a mixture are uh, only in physical contact with each other, and that means that uh, the components of a mixture can be separated by physical means. And methods of physically separating components of a mixture include filtration, distillation, crystallization, magnetism, and gravitational separation. Now filtration involves separating big particles from smaller particles with a filter. So particles are separated by the size of a barrier that has holes in it. Uh, small particles pass through the holes and big particles will not pass through. So an example of a filter is a uh, colander. So this is a bowl that uh, has holes in it and colanders are used to separate uh, water or liquids from vegetables. So you boil some vegetables and you pour the vegetables through here and the water passes through the holes and then the vegetables which can't pass through the hole uh, get caught. So that's an example of filtration. Um, let's see, here's, uh, okay, I think this is what we want. Yeah. Okay, so here's an example of uh, filtration. Um, so if I take 
Let's see. Is this the one we want? No, I think this is the one we want. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. So here's an example of filtration. I've got uh, some solid objects in this uh, container. And one way I can separate the solid objects <coughs> from the salt that's in here is to pour it through a uh, filter. So I'll just pour this in here like that. Ugh. See if I can shake this out. And And there we go. So, we started out with a mixture of uh, coins and salt, and then I used uh, filtration to uh, physically separate the salt from the uh, coins because the uh, salt crystals can pass easily through the holes, but the uh, coins can't pass through the holes. So, on a very large macro scale, that's an example of filtration. Filtration is used to purify water also. You pass it through uh, filter paper or membranes that have microscopic holes in them and the water goes through, but uh, the bacteria can't fit through the holes. Distillation uses heat to separate substances that easily evaporate from those that don't evaporate. For example, if salt is dissolved in water, the mixture can be separated by boiling the solution. Uh, the water will boil away, but the salt will be left behind since salt doesn't easily evaporate. So here's my little picture of a Bunsen burner giving off heat, and it heats up the water, and the water easily evaporates, but salt does not uh, evaporate or boil very easily, and what's left behind is the salt residue. Normally, when you think of distillation, you think of recapturing the uh, liquid that uh, has evaporated. Crystallization occurs when too much solid has been dissolved in a liquid. Uh, when this occurs, solid has been dissolved will start to come out of solution and form crystals. Now this is how rock candy is made. So what you do is you take lots of sugar and you dissolve it in hot water. And the hot water uh, helps dissolve it when it's at a higher temperature. Uh, when the water cools, the sugar will crystallize and separate from the water. So I have a picture here of rock candy being made. And this picture this was a solution of uh, hot water with a lot of sugar dissolved in it and then all they did was that they just stuck a uh, little metal rod in there and then what happens is as the water cools uh, it's unable to keep the sugar dissolved and so the uh, sugar crystals start to precipitate out of solution and they start to bond with each other and then the uh, sugar becomes physically separated from the uh, water so crystallization is an example of a physical uh, separation Magnetism can be used to separate magnetic substances from non-magnetic substances. Uh, for example, iron nails can be separated from sand with a magnet. And let's see here, can I show that? Yeah, so I've, what I've done here is that I've hidden some uh, metallic objects in here. You can probably already see it, but anyway. So I've got a magnet right here and I've got some nails uh, buried in the uh, rice here. So I can sort of, if I just move this around a little bit. See, there we go. And then we have our uh, iron separated from the uh, rice because uh, iron nails have magnetic properties, but rice uh, is not very magnetic at all. Okay, let me put this away. Gravitational separation can be used to uh, separate substances if one substance is heavier than another. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, heavier substances move more slowly than lighter substances, and this allows for the separation of mixtures. Um, one way you can gravitationally separate uh, the components of blood is you put it in a centrifuge, and you just basically, it's a tube, uh, you take a test tube, you fill it with blood, and you spin it, and then what happens is the uh, heavier molecules will settle to the bottom, and the lighter molecules will uh, float to the top. Uh, chromatography is another example of gravitational uh, separation. Now, in chromatography, a fluid such as blood or urine is dropped onto the end of a piece of paper. Uh, the end of the paper is placed in a solvent like water, and then as the solvent is absorbed up into the paper, uh, the components of the mixture are swept along with the solvent. So this is how drug testing is sometimes done. If they want to know whether you're taking drugs or not, um, they'll take a sample of your urine, they'll put it uh, a few drops at the bottom of a piece of uh, paper, and then they'll stick the paper in some sort of solvent. The solvent 
will be absorbed into the paper and then what will happen is the components of your urine will start to separate out with the lighter components coming on top and the heavier components staying behind. And if you're taking drugs, uh, the drugs will appear at a certain location. So that's kind of a screening test that's used to determine if you're uh, using drugs. So, as I said before, the heavier components of the mixture will uh, move slowly while the lighter components move faster. Uh, the heavier components will separate and end up closer to the bottom, while the lighter components will end up closer to the top of uh, the paper. And chromatography can also be used to separate components of ink. Uh, ink is often a mixture of pigments, and some pigments are heavier than others. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and I... This is just a paper towel. And I just put a spot of uh, black ink, and I think this was a Crayola uh, black ink pen. And then I stuck the bottom of this into some water, and the water got absorbed into the paper. And as the water moves up, the water carried the components of the ink. And then what happens is it'll separate out the uh, colors. So this is what it looks like after about 10 minutes when you leave this, uh, the end of this in the water, and the water's moved up. If you look at it, you can clearly see sort of a heavier purple ink pigment. And then around here, it's kind of a greenish color. And at the very tip right here, it look, has kind of a bluish look. Let me lift this up so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, kind of hard to see, but um, it's, it has a touch of blue right at the top there. I've got another one I used with, uh, I found a... Uh, water-soluble ink pen, so this is a water-soluble uh, ink, and I stuck this end into water and let the water move up, and then these are the colors uh, that I got. Uh, same thing, you have a heavier purple one right here, and then there's sort of a light green color right here, and then along this top part right here, it's blue. I don't know if you can see it that well. Oh, okay, eh, not too bad. All right, anyway, so that's an example of how uh, ink is a mixture and you can physically separate the components of uh, ink using gravity or chromatography. Okay, this has been a chemistry lecture. Number 13. Uh, if you want a uh, PDF uh, copy of this lecture, this is on uh, Mixtures and Matter, I believe is the name of this one. Yeah, Mixtures of Matter. <laughs> mixtures of Matter. So, if you want a PDF copy of this uh, lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. Thanks for watching.